We had another great week in the movement. Got multiple new members this week. The Wake Cross Ware County Development Authority is looking for their next president. General Motors will undertake a $93 million upgrade at its propulsion plant in Romulus, Michigan. This restaurant grant program is part of Uber Eats local support effort that will provide $20 million plus in support commitments over the next six months. He gave me a bunker tip one day that I now want to give to you that really helped my sand trap game. Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Here is Chad Chancellor. Hello, this is Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. Welcome to this week's YouTube Economic Development Newscast, the voice of economic development. And I'm recording this one late on Sunday night. I don't know if any of y'all are baseball fans. I know the Mississippi State people are. If there are any college baseball fans out there, this tournament that they're playing in Arlington has been fantastic. It's absolutely been fantastic. Mississippi State's out there. We beat Texas yesterday, lost to TCU today. We had the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth. We won out and ground into double play and lost the ball game. Oh, Miss, just beat Texas Tech. I'm late recording this, so I hope we get this out to y'all on time because I got to watch that game. Oh, Miss just beat Texas Tech. Texas Tech just hit a ball to the fence at the end of the game that would have won the game, but Ole Miss caught. It's been a tremendous tournament. Got to hurry up because Arkansas and Texas are about to play. So y'all going to see this on Monday, and they all play again. On Monday, it's been a tremendous tournament. I think all six teams are in the top 10. Tomorrow, Mississippi State, I believe, plays Texas Tech. So, Texas Tech is 0-2 now. Now, I know some of y'all don't like baseball, but I love college baseball. And thank goodness it's back. But let's get into a little bit of economic development. So, we'll start right out there in Texas with our executive searches. So, our executive search for the Victoria, Texas Economic Development Corporation's vice president has moved now into the phase where we're going to grade all our candidates and choose our semifinalists. Last week was a cutoff day, and that posed problematic because of Texas's problems with the ice storm. So on our site selection economic development side, if you've ever wondered if electric reliability matters, you're going to get more questions now, I bet you, than ever before from manufacturers about electric reliability. Not just if a storm puts it out, but how's your power generated and so forth? You watch. You're going to be getting more questions about that. So if you don't get but one tip out of this week's episode, ask your utilities, work with them to come up with your reliability stats and be able to answer that question because I'm telling you it's coming. As far as our other executive searches, the Jefferson City, Missouri Chamber of Commerce search we're doing up there, State Captain Missouri, we moved that one to where we're ready to interview finalists. Down at Putnam County, Florida, we moved that one to where we're ready to interview finalists. We've made a hire at C3 Northwest Alabama and our private searches are moving along. So all that's moving along really well for us. We had another great week in the movement, got multiple new members this week. This week's video is gonna be on housing. Many of you told us that you're having trouble, particularly in mid-sized towns and small towns with workforce housing. You got housing for the rich folks and the low income, but maybe not the workforce housing. So we went out this week found three experts, one on the feasibility plans you need for housing, one on how to develop apartments, even the EDO, if you want to develop apartments, and one is on spurring the growth of single family housing. So we're looking forward to that. This past week, we did a book review on Agents of Economic Development, which is a book written by Dr. Bill Smith and Neil Wade. And uh, I really enjoyed doing this because Dr. Smith invites me every year. He's retired now, but he did invite me every year to speak to his marketing class on economic development at Southern Miss. So good book we did this week. We interviewed the two of them, did a review of their book they just came out with. This would be a tremendous book if you wanted your mayor to read it. And of course, mayors watch this show. Mayors, if you want to read this to kind of get a fundamental of economic development or economic developers if you wanted staff to read it be a good book you can go over and find it on amazon agents of economic development my two favorite chapters one was on economic development marketing it was very very good and one was on how to defend the deal when you give away tax incentives how do you defend the deal they actually said that the economic development profession now the, the stature of it is less than it was 10 years ago. People think less of it. You know why that is? Because everybody's attacking it. Remember Amazon in New York and everything? That's why that is. So as professionals, we need to always stand up 
and defend our profession. I enjoyed presenting to the West Virginia Economic Development Conference this past week, virtually, of course, on how to build a machine-like program to land manufacture plants. I already had some good feedback from that one, so special thank you to Robbie Morris for asking me to do that when I really, really enjoyed it. And it was interesting. Uh, this week I saw on LinkedIn, and I have looked for it, but I haven't been able to find it again. Why in this world I didn't save it, I don't know, but just one of the typical dumb things I might do in any given day. But there was an article this week about how all the rural programs that the federal government's come up with are too complicated for rural towns to actually spur their economic development. And, of course, some of our listeners are rural. I saw a graph. If y'all looked around LinkedIn, you'll see this. And many of you seen it and commented on it, but I can't find it now that I'm hunting. But I saw a graph that had all the federal programs designed for economic development for rural towns and where they went. So you would have commerce, transportation, this, that, and the other. And the whole article was about how it's too complicated. Most rural towns have just one person in their economic development office or chamber office, maybe two if they're lucky, a part-time mayor. They don't have the personnel to do all the paperwork that it requires for these programs. So that was a very interesting article that, uh, that I actually believe I read from someone in West Virginia. So I very much enjoyed our, uh, our meeting this week in West Virginia, talking about how to build a machine-like program to land manufacturing plants. I want to make you aware of a three-week online course that the University of North Alabama is putting on, talking about building an agile economy. As y'all have probably picked up, Alabama's probably our strongest state. I believe we've had more customers from Alabama than any other state if I had to add it up, at least in number of volume, maybe in revenue not, but in just number of volume, Alabama's probably our number one state. And so uh, I used to live up near Muscle Shoals. And so this course has caught my attention. Coming up, I think our mayors that listen are going to really be interested in some of our economic development chamber leaders. It's about building an agile economy in the face of natural disasters, pandemics, globalization, technological change. You can do this all virtually. If you look at the screen right now, you'll see this is sort of a sliding view of it. You can actually get continuing education credits. And so if you sign up through our link, you'll actually be able to get the early bird discount right up until signing up for this course. But why does this strike me this week? Well, it strikes me after seeing the power situation we just went through in Louisiana and Texas where we had rolling blackouts. And so the more we can build an economy that can sustain these type disasters, look what's happened with COVID. None of us pictured that. None of us pictured these rolling blackouts a week ago. So the more that mayors and economic developers can work to build agile economies, the better off we'll be. And this course caught my attention. So y'all take a look at it. And then lastly, this week, we're going to pick the golf tip back up. And this week's golf tip doesn't come from a famous golfer, but it comes from one of my good friends, Joe Shaw. He's a PGA professional up in St. Louis, Missouri. I went to Mississippi State with him. We interned at the Woodlands, Texas together, and he beat me nearly every day. I don't know if I ever beat him. I might have tied him one day, but I think he beat me. He was a lot better than me. He beat me nearly every day. And he gave me a bunker tip one day that I now want to give to you that really helped my sand trap game. The reason I'm giving this to you is he just won our football picking contest for the second time in a row. Some of y'all know that we run something called the Brag and Rights Football Picking Contest. I invented it with my best friend growing up, Kenneth Baggett. We've now had it, I guess, 25 years in a row. We started it back when we were in middle school. And now we have a whole lot of economic developers that play. Dale Boyette won this thing twice, as a matter of fact. And uh, Joe Shaw just won it for his second time in a row. And so we want to honor him. He just beat Alex Metzger, the co-founder of Next Move Group. Alex choked on the last few days. He just beat him. And he beat Kenneth Baggett, the other guy who started with me. So I was rooting hard for Joe. And Joe won. So I'm going to give you Joe's sand trap tip. At the Woodlands, which was over in Houston, Texas, you remember they used to play the Houston Open there. We had very soft sand. And I grew up playing on hard sand. If you play on hard sand, wet, you know, you want to lean into the ball. You, are, you want your weight a little bit on your left foot, and you want to come in kind of steep and hit about an inch behind that ball is what you want to do. Well, I had grown up playing that way, and I never had played on real soft sand. But if you're playing on real soft sand, especially down here on the golf, a lot of us play on soft sand. Joe gave me a tip. I, I wasn't getting out of the traps good in Houston, and, I, and of course, he was beating me, so he probably should have just let me keep struggling. But he said, Chad, what are you doing? I'm going to show you how to get out of that trap. I said, okay. He said, put 60% of your weight on your right foot, 60% of the weight. 
And then when you take that club, you keep your weight there. You're going to hit an inch behind the ball, but by having it behind there, when you hit an inch behind the ball, that club's going to pass your hands. See here like this, it's going to pass your hands. And that sand's just going to come out. It's going to come out high and pretty. And that ball's just going to stop. That's what he said to me. And instantly I started doing that. If you're playing on soft sand, not hard sand now, listen to me, on soft sand, soft, fluffy sand, you put 60% of your weight on your right foot, you take that club back and you hit an inch behind that ball, and you're going to be shocked at how pretty your sand shots come out, get on the green, and stop. So with that being said, it's been another good week for Next Move Group, but i got to get off here because now I want to watch Arkansas and Texas play baseball. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. Welcome to this week's session of the We Are Jobs podcast with the Next Move Group. There's a lot of jobs available, but I'm going to cover some that expire soon, mainly in February. That way you guys have an opportunity to go ahead and apply. So let's get started. First up, the Matagorda County Economic Development Corporation in Texas is looking for their next um, Executive Director of Economic Development. This role will double as the Executive Director of the Palacios Economic Development Corporation on a contract basis. Their primary focus will be to execute and lead a countywide industrial recruitment effort, as well as increase retail and tourism outside of the Bay City uh, city limits. While reporting to an 11 member board, this person will need at least three years of economic development experience and two of management experience. You can apply by paper directly to the Matagorda County office or by email to mcedcexdir at gmail.com. This job closes on March 15th, so go ahead and get that in if you're interested. Next up, we have two roles in Georgia, with the first one being in Sandy Springs. They're looking for an economic development director. So Sandy Springs is the largest municipality in Georgia and the second largest in the Atlanta metro area. So if you wanna be in close proximity to a large city, this is a good one for you. This person needs significant experience in redevelopment and they will have a focus on planning and initiating all economic development efforts for the city. In addition to that, they'll be responsible for identifying new economic development opportunities as well as securing funds for those opportunities. The salary range for this one is approximately 105K to 131K. You can apply directly on the city's website. Next up in Georgia, the Waycross Ware County Development Authority is looking for their next president. So Waycross Ware is about an hour from Georgia's Golden Isles and it's about an hour from the Jacksonville, Florida airport. So this is a good job if you like to be near the water. This organization is already successful. So it's looking for a candidate with all types of experience. That can be traditional economic development experience or a combination of community, real estate, business, and marketing experience. To apply for this role, you will send your resume to rcardoza at the chasongroup.com. All right, so moving on back down south, uh, Los Alamos County, New Mexico is looking for an economic development administrator. So the administrator will report to the community development director as part of the county's leadership team. They will implement countywide strategies that increase the economic base, and this will be done through business attraction and retention, as well as marketing of the county's quality of life factors. A bachelor's degree is required and a master's is preferred. In addition to that, uh, this person will need at least seven years of experience. The salary range for this role is 90K to about 133. Apply for this role, you'll send your resume to www.losalamosnm.us. The deadline to apply for this job is uh, February 26th. 
Last but not least, we have a role in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is the Economic Development Coordinator too for Grand Rapids Economic Development Office. This is not an entry level role, so it's for someone more experienced in the field. Additionally, the Grand Rapids is looking for someone with a range of experience that includes BRE program creation and execution, project management, and working with entrepreneurs, startups, and high tech businesses. The salary for this role is approximately 80K to 102. You can apply for this role on governmentjobs.com. The deadline for this one is uh, February 27th. So again, a lot of these jobs will end this month. So go ahead and get that in if you're interested. We don't have any new jobs to announce right now for Next Move Group, but we will on our next session. Good luck to you in the job search. Hello, this is Brandon Nettles. In this week's Rounding the Basis segment, I will be detailing new industrial announcements from across America. To start us off this week, Crown Equipment Corporation, they're a lift truck manufacturer. They expect to create more than 130 new jobs in Lenore County, North Carolina. They're planning to invest up to $13 million to expand their manufacturing operations in the county. Cottrell will invest $125 million and establish a second manufacturing facility in Gainesville, Georgia. Integrated Fiber Solutions is going to invest $30 million in expanding their operations in Rome, Georgia. Cardinal Foods, uh, they're going to expand their operations with a $15.5 million investment in Pender County, North Carolina. Celigo is going to locate its third major North American location in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, they're expecting to create up to 150 new high-wage jobs by the end of 2024. Root App Incorporated is going to uh, locate its expanded operations center in Leahy, Utah. The project is expected to add over 3,000 new high-paying jobs in the state in the next 11 years. T. Marzetti Company is going to increase the company's expansion project from 93 million to 133 million and add 220 full-time employees to its workforce in Hart County, Kentucky. Since he plans to establish operations in Rock Hill, South Carolina, that investment is expected to create over 200 jobs in the first year. General Motors will undertake a $93 million upgrade at its propulsion plant in Romulus, Michigan. Hall Industries will streamline operations into a new facility in Mercer County, Pennsylvania with a $11.8 million investment. DuPont Interconnect Solutions is going to undertake a $220 million expansion project at its production site in Circleville, Ohio. Freshly Incorporated uh, is going to expand its operations by opening a new facility in Austell, Georgia. The project is expected to bring over 250 jobs to the greater Atlanta area. Danson's USA will open the country's largest barbecue wood pellet mill and distribution center in Hope, Arkansas. The project is expected to create approximately 50 to 100 jobs in the next three years. Gilead Sciences selected uh, the Research Triangle region for its investment and is expected to create 270 jobs, uh, over 270 jobs in Wake County, North Carolina. Lone Powell will open a new operating center in Bentonville, Arkansas. The project is expected to bring more than 100 jobs in financial technology to the region. While in North America Incorporated, uh, they're a copper products manufacturer. They're going to invest $8.8 .8 million to locate its HQ in Louisville, Kentucky, with plans to hire 75 employees. Finally, Microvass is going to invest $220 million to establish a new manufacturing facility in Clarksville, Tennessee. That company plans to create 287 new jobs. That's going to round us out for this week. If you have any uh, new announcements that are coming up that you'd like me to feature, please feel free to reach out, uh, and I will see you next time. Hey everyone, it's Gabby Molise, and welcome to this week's Learning Lab segment. I'm going to go over a couple of small business COVID-19 relief grants that are available across the United States. The first one I'm going to talk about today is Uber Eats partnering with LISC. Uber Eats partnered with LISC, or the Local Initiative Support Corporation. This restaurant grant program is part of Uber Eats local support effort that will provide $20 million plus in support commitments over the next six months. As part of this program, LISC will administer the $4.5 million restaurant grant program that will help Uber Eats and Postmate restaurant partners in the United States get through the economic crisis that was caused by COVID-19. The restaurant grant program offers grants of $5,000 to Uber Eats or Postmates restaurant partners partners to help meet their most immediate needs, and some eligible expenses include, but are not limited to, 
paying rent and utilities, meeting payroll, paying outstanding debt to vendors, upgrading technology infrastructure, and other immediate operational costs. Applications are due Sunday, February 28th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, and you can learn more about that on lisc.org slash COVID-19 slash small business assistance slash small business relief grant slash Uber. The next grant opportunity I'm going to talk about today is with the Small Business Administration. This grant is called the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, and it offers emergency assistance for eligible venues affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Eligible applicants may qualify for SVO grants equal to 45% of their gross earned revenue. Some eligible entities are the live venue operators or promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organization operators, relevant museum operators, zoos, and aquariums who meet specific criteria motion picture theater operators, talent representatives, and each business entity that is owned by an eligible entity that also meets those eligibility requirements. SBA is in the process of setting up the grant program, so it's not yet accepting applications. Those who have suffered the greatest economic loss will be the first applicants process once it does open up. So you can't apply yet, but I wanted to bring it to your attention since it'll eventually be available so you can be ready to apply. You can learn more about the SBO grant and see if your organization is eligible at sba.gov slash funding program slash loans slash coronavirus relief options slash shuttered venue operators grant. All right, well, that's all for this week. And until next time, stay warm. Mm -hmm.